I'm uh, very, very happy you're here. I want to talk about the show, but I want to start by talking World Cup time. England plays tomorrow. Not, they're already through to the next round. Will you yes. watch that game, though? Is that very important? Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. And I will watch it touchingly with the same eight friends I've been watching the World Cup with since 1982. Oh, fantastic. Does yeah. that mean you have to get on a plane to go see them, or are they coming here? No, no, they come to my house. <laughs> okay. And we watch it on the TV, and uh, we, nothing changes. We're now in our mid to late 50s, and some of my friends are now judges and heads of uh, banks and things like that. But we still, if England score, we still have what we call a bundle. Do you have bundles? I, I don't know. Well, it just means you all, you all jump on top of each other. Oh, like a pig pile, we a would call it. A pig pile, yeah. 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 Of course, your name makes it classier. <laughs> yeah. But we have to do it quite slowly now, because we've all got bad backs. Oh, so, right. Yeah. So there's but, a little bit, and I'm sure there's someone who has certain medical reasons they can't be at the bottom of the bundle anymore. Well, no, there's always one who is at the bottom, because we sort of hate him. <laughs> OK, got gotcha. Yeah. So. No, I feel like there wasn't a ton of optimism about the English team going into the World Cup, but they've won the first two matches. We, are you are we, you falling for it again? We have beaten the footballing giants of Tunisia and Panama. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the English press is now saying this is our year for yeah. the World Cup. Yeah. You are a bit. It is like a, it's recidivism that every you just keep falling for the team every year and and hope. And it is. It, it, I mean, it's since '82, obviously not not much has gone right. Uh, no, nothing at all. Nothing yeah. at all. Except almost every time we lose to the Germans, and we can't this year. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's something to look forward to. I know. I'm so sorry for the Germans. You do. You look. There's a sadness in yes. you coming through. Yes, it's breaking my heart. You, uh, when you were young, you actually worked at the Fulham Football Club, which is a London club. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I used to wash the seats there. Disgusting job, really. And, and dangerous, too, because... Uh, for some reason, they, my workmate was uh, a, a, a psychopath. And uh, I said to our boss, I don't think this guy's very well, you know, mentally. And he said, nonsense, nonsense, he's fine. And after three weeks, he stabbed me. No! Yes. <laughs> I have to say, I resigned. <laughs> they let, they let him half. stay on? They oh, yeah, him. he stayed on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's English football. Right? Uh, you're right, yeah. exactly. No. He's got a go-getter attitude you don't have. Like, he brought the knife. <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> It was the real deal. I was. Um, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. People have told me uh, that we look alike. Uh, I know. Yeah, there's I a know. little similarity. And a I, droopy eyes. Yeah, we got that nice droopy yeah, eye. Is. And I really, I will be honest. Um, in the in the mid '90s, I really leaned into the fact that we looked alike. <laughs> you had, you had a hairstyle that I thought I was like that looks great on on Hugh Grant's face. I'm close enough. I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> That is I mean, shocking. that's like, that's like pretty. <laughs> I'm very ashamed of this one because this one, you look uh, great, and I did another terrible thing that you avoided in the 90s, which is I grew a terrible thing on my chin, but that, uh, <laughs> that's the one I feel that's shame awful. for. That's awful. We look like two telephones. <laughs> so, uh, this, show, this uh, is based on a true story, uh, the, yes. the show. Yeah, yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about Jeremy Thorpe. Well, it was this massive scandal in Britain in the, in the 70s. I, rem I remember it because I, you know, I was in my teens then, and it was just the biggest political scandal we've ever had, and it and resulted in this massive trial, the trial of the century. And it was this guy who was the head of one of our three big parties, uh, political parties, absolute member of the establishment, who went to Eton, you know, where all the royal family go, went to Oxford, beautifully dressed, very smooth, had a family, had a wife. Turned out he, he put a hit on his ex-gay lover who was stalking him and threatening to reveal him. And uh, it was a really crap hit. It was that was the very English bit. It was so <laughs> kind of hopeless and amateurish. And, uh, you know, the hit man was an out-of-work airline pilot who got it all wrong and, and used the wrong gun and shot the dog instead of the man. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, it was very scandalous. And it, it, so the, the series is quite... Dark, but also funny because it was just so absurd. Well, I will say the when I heard the description of it, you know, there's a murder trial and it's a closeted a politician. And I think in this fraught political time we live in, I just assumed it would be so much darker. It is. It's a weird thing to say. It is a lot of fun as well, which is a nice thing to watch about politics right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But they are freaks. I mean, I, I I've sp <laughs> I've spent uh, the last six years of my life. Uh, very unlike me, getting heavily involved in politics in Britain, this campaign I've been doing about evil newspapers. 
And uh, so I'm up close with politicians all the time. And there is, it un is unquestionably true that they are weirdos. They're, they're, <laughs> who would go into that job? You're not yeah. paid very much. Mm -hmm. And really, it, that old thing is true. It is show business for the ugly. They're, they're um, <laughs> narcissistic, <laughs> egomaniacal, yeah. sociopathic. And with absolutely, and very, very rarely, any interest in the country or its welfare, I find. I mean, you, so, I mean, you, one of the things I, I know you've been advocating for is trying to stop, uh, um, it was the hacking scandal uh, with yeah, newspapers. Yeah. And, and do you at least find that when you talk to politicians about that, that they are listening to you and hearing? Or do you feel like it's going in one ear and out the other? <laughs> no, they listen and they are on our side, completely on our side, actually. I don't think I've ever met one who's really um, philosophically opposed. But that's not how politics works. It's one of the things that's made me so cynical. Uh, because these big newspapers are so powerful, they make or break our politicians. They, they choose our prime minister, effectively. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to these big votes on, uh, well, let's have a new system of regulation where actually newspapers do have to kind of print the truth instead of a lie, at the last moment, the government will always back out because they have to please these big tax-dodging bastards who uh, the newspapers. It's uh, very terrifying, and uh, I'm glad we don't have any problems like that over here. Um, <laughs> well, you, like, you don't have those problems. Yeah, we don't have those. Yeah, your press is rather nice. Uh,